A few years ago, I got a message from an ex, and it said, Roses are red, violets are blue, I've got chlamydia and you might have too. Which, first of all, is genius, but it meant I was taking a trip down to the clinic the next morning to get tested. I have a point to this story, and I swear it's about computers. If you ever want to see a complete cross-section of London life, do join the queue for the STI testing clinic first thing in the morning. Actually, get yourself tested anyway, it's, it's the right thing to do. Anyway, I go to the clinic, I pee in the sample tube, I seal it up, I hand it over, and they give me a little business card with a, a phone number and a passcode on it. And I can call that number the next day, and if my tests are all clear, then the system will tell me. And if they're not, it will pass me over to someone at the clinic, because you do not deliver bad news with an automated system. So the next day, I call the number, type in the code, and the system says, Thanks, here are your test results. And then there is a pause, a proper 10 second long pause. And as I stood there on my mobile in the middle of the street, it felt a little bit like the artificial pause they had in reality shows before they announced the winner. It felt like there was a spotlight on me, there was all dramatic tension music playing in the background. And then it says, we're putting you through to one of our team. Please stand by. That's bad news, right? Bad news comes from a human. Why are they passing me through? Someone picks up. I give them a passcode again and they say, no, it's all clear. You don't need to worry. Everything's negative. You're, you're fine. And I ask why the system put me through, and they say, oh, no idea. It just does that sometimes. It just does that sometimes. Did the database lookup fail in the background, and it dealt with a timeout by just passing me to a human? Uh, was there a small note on my file somewhere that, that confused it? I've no idea. They had no idea, because whoever wrote that code, whoever designed that system, the moment there was any error, they just told it to go to, we're putting you through, without explaining why, and without thinking what that might cause. That phone system is used by people asking about things way more serious than chlamydia, the sort of things that you can't cure with a course of antibiotics. And sure, on the scale of complaints, it is minor, but mistakes like that are a symptom of something much bigger. I've talked about bodging things in the past. I encourage it for hobby projects. Just slapping something together as a proof of concept, just so it works for you, is a great principle when you are making a thing for yourself. But if you're making something for the public, for mass consumption particularly, something that is going to be used by people in very vulnerable moments, then you've got to take a lot more care. Every time we build something for the public, we have to start making a trade-off. How much time and money is it worth to deal with every edge case? Maybe the designer thought that lookups would only fail one in a million times, and if that's the case, then... Yeah, it's, it's probably not reasonable to bother recording a whole extra message and programming in a whole extra edge case. But if the lookup fails often enough that the clinic receptionist just dismisses it as normal, well, by that point it's too late to make the change, isn't it? The system's in place, it'll be far too expensive to fix it now. It'll do. The trouble is that we're often dealing with unknown harms and unintended consequences. Far too often, a bodged-together system that was just meant to be a test gets rolled out into production, and everyone just has to deal with the bugs, because that's all anyone can afford to do. I will always bet on incompetence rather than malice. I will always bet on someone just not thinking about consequences, rather than thinking of them and going, eh, who cares? We see this with big tech companies. Facebook allows the world to communicate in unprecedented ways. It does huge amounts of emotional labour for us. It allows people to keep in touch with old friends that they would just fall away from otherwise. But it's also enabled stalkers and abusers to reach people they shouldn't. It's allowed a huge amount of private data to be misused without real consent, and it's arguably helped cause terrifying election meddling. Now, I don't believe anyone in Facebook's management was rubbing their hands in delight at the chaos it was causing. It's just a, a series of seemingly reasonable decisions that added up to huge consequences. And then there's YouTube. It allows anyone to publish their experiences to the world. It provides income for creative people that bypasses traditional media, and it's helped people connect with other people's lives. It's also helped radicalise folks to promote conspiracy theories and to traumatise children. Are those trade-offs worth it? Depends on your moral framework, and it depends, let's be honest, on how it's affected you personally. It's not like there's a crystal ball that'll tell you, yes, your brand new dating app you're developing, that will cause 1,000 couples to marry and live happily ever after. 
but it will also get three people murdered. The real world is not a trolley problem. The STI results system that I called presumably reduced the workload on staff, and it allowed people to check the results out of hours when it was convenient and discreet for them. You would hope that something like that wouldn't have a downside, but then the designers screwed it up because they thought it was good enough, and it wasn't. One extra check, one extra voice message that said, sorry, I can't find your result, just a moment, would have solved that. Every time that we design a system, we have to minimise the potential of harm. Look at the code you write. Look at the systems you design and think, how could this be abused? How could this fall apart? What are the failure states here? If you were a bad actor, if you wanted to use this maliciously, how would you go about it? Think about how you'd attack your own systems, explore those failure states, deliberately screw things up, and see how your code copes, because if you don't, someone else will. Thank you very much to the Centre for Computing History at Cambridge, who've let me film with all their old equipment, and to all my proofreading team who checked through my script.